Hello, hallelujah, praise the Lord. What an opportunity to come before you, children of God. This is Lisa Rose Kalusa, and I'm so excited for what God has in store for each and every one of us tonight. I am coming to you live from Agape Word Center Church Studios. So welcome, Agape family, and welcome to all our viewers all over the world. So go ahead, please share the link. Link. Share the link on your social media platforms. Share on YouTube. Share on Facebook. Share on your WhatsApp statuses. So tonight we are looking at impact. So let's talk impact. Last week, if you watched our broadcast, we talked about we talked about destiny, discovering and fulfilling purpose. That is very important. If you've not watched that, it's not too late. You can watch it right after tonight's program. Amen. So tonight we're looking at impact. Okay. In this month of May, we've been looking at uh, women of God that had tremendous impact. We had time to look at Esther. We've looked at uh, Abigail, we've looked at so many other women. So this is a month of impact. So stay tuned. We have a lot in store for you. And our guest for tonight is Prophetess Mwaka Twagwira Yesu. She's coming to us all the way from Dallas, Texas. Hallelujah. I hope you are just as excited as I am. So Prophetess Mwaka is a, is a kingdom ambassador. She is so passionate to see people come out of a place of complacency and a place of mediocrity to be the people that God has created them to be. Isn't that exciting? So if you are a person who is questioning where you are and saying, this is not what God created me for. We have just the right guest speaker tonight who will be able to answer your questions and help you get in the right direction tonight. Prophetess Mwaka is the founder of Fresh Aroma International Ministry and has traveled all over the U.S. She's traveled to Europe. She's traveled to parts of Africa, preaching the gospel with tangible signs and wonders, testimonies, breakthroughs in marriages, family, finances, businesses, career, and immigration. She is a much sought after international conference speaker, leadership developer, Brit British trained lawyer, mediator, author, church planter, revivalist, made numerous TV appearances and has been on Radio Christian Voice for 11 years. That is Radio Christian Voice Zambia. She is the visionary of Distinguished Women Network through which multitudes of women have been tremendously impacted and transformed through the conferences and meetings. She is also the founder of the School of Excellence, which is a mentorship program teaching and training people biblical principles of excellency in life, family, business, career, vocation, and ministry. Trust me, child of God, she is the right person to discuss impact. So stay tuned as I welcome Prophetess Mwaka Twagwira Yesu. You, you are you. welcome, Prophetess. <laughs> Go ahead and greet our viewers tonight. Thank you so much, Minister Lisa. I'm excited to be back on Let's Talk. We had a marvelous time, powerful time last week with Minister Stephanie, and I'm so delighted to be back again with you now as my host, Minister Lisa. Thank you for the warm welcome. And a big thank you to the visionaries, Pastor Chongo and my beautiful sister, Pastor Angela C. I'm so honored and I'm so blessed to be here. Thank you. Amen. So if you have shared the link, you have your pen and paper ready, I will invite you to just 
take a seat somewhere and just be attentive to what we have in store for you tonight. And trust me, you will be blessed. I want us to take some time and pray. Amen. I want us to take some time and pray tonight. I, 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 my prayer is that wherever you are, I do believe that the Lord has a word, a word, a special word for you, a unique word for you, a word that is just meant for you, individualized for you, you who is watching us. I'm talking to you. God has a special word that is just specified for you because he knows your situation. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows your destiny. And tonight he has prepared a word for you. It's not by accident that you are watching. Hallelujah. So let us just go ahead and pray. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we honor and magnify you, Lord, for tonight. We bless your mighty name, Father, because this that we have tonight, Father, this table talk tonight is not by accident. Father, there is a person out there, a woman out there, a man out there who is in need of your word. Father God, your word tells us that you sent your word into Jacob and the word lighted upon Israel. You sent a word into one man and the word lighted upon the entire nation. Father, that is a word that we are looking for tonight. A word that will transform somebody's life for Father, for the sake of others, for the sake of this generation. Father, for the sake of this nation. Father, for the sake of of the families out there. Father, we trust you for your word tonight. A word for me. Father, a word for somebody. Father, a word that will turn somebody's life around. Father, in the name of Jesus. A word that will transform somebody's life in the name of Jesus. Father, a word that will bring a 24 hour transformation in the name of Jesus. Father, a word that will take someone from a path of destruction to into a path of destiny in the name of Jesus. Father, a word that will cause somebody's capacity to be enlarged in the name of Jesus. A word that will catapult, Father, somebody from a place of complacency to a place of influence, to a place of impact in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight we receive from your hands that, that which you have for us. We receive from your hands, Father, that which you have prepared for us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ushering us tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. So moving forward, Prophetess uh, Mwaka, we are talking about impact tonight. And we are going to look at the early church. My first question is, the early church made such tremendous impact. This is not even a question. This is a statement. The early church made, made tremendous impact. Hallelujah. They made so much impact in such a short time. Now, why is today's believer struggling for impact? Why is today's uh, believer not making impact? Why are we still in the same place? Why isn't Christianity going places where it needs to go today? Why are we comfortable? Why are we comfortable in a place where we are surrounded by nine believers? Why are we comfortable with where the world is heading today? There's so much wickedness in the world today. The Bible has been taken off the, our shelves, off, off the libraries, Christian books. Books that should be educating our children. Books that should carry biblical principles are taken off the shelves today. Christianity is not in schools today because our Bibles have been removed. What is happening? 
Why are Christians so comfortable today? What is wrong with the Christian world today? But before we talk about the problems that we are, we are going through, I want us to look at the early church, if that's okay. Because we need to give a little bit of background because there are people out there, they are like, okay, what are you talking about? What about the early church? What did they do? Uh, can you tell me more about the early church? We want to address that. We want to give a little bit of background. Let's talk about the early church. What happened in the early church? Can we give examples of what people did previously that we can use today to measure as our yardstick? What happened? Prophetess Mwaka, if you could take us back to the early church and just take our minds there so we can see what happened. An excellent topic. Thank you again, Minister Lisa. I'm delighted to be here. We share together and minister to the beautiful people of God. You know, after Jesus rose again from the dead, remember he was telling his disciples, I'm going back to the Father. And they were so broken. They were so devastated. They're like, you've just risen again. We thought you would be together. And he said, no, I'm sending a comforter. And he gave them an instruction to wait in Jerusalem. So we know that, of course, Jesus went back to the Father. And so the disciples were given an instruction to tarry in Jerusalem. And biblical scholars tell us there were actually about 500 when they started. And uh, they, they, they were supposed to pray and fast and wait on the Lord for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But from the 500, you know, people are not patient. Only 120 remained. I think the rest, maybe the third day, fourth day, they're like, okay, where is this Holy Spirit that Jesus spoke about? Some maybe the seventh day, the eighth day gave up. But those who waited, the Bible says when the fullness of time had come, on the day that the Lord mentioned the power of the Spirit of the Lord fell down on those 120, and those disciples became powerful servants of God because it was no longer them, but the Spirit of God came upon them. And remember, they began to speak in other tongues. And what was amazing, Jerusalem was a very cosmopolitan city just like Washington, D.C., is people from all nations. And as they were speaking in tongues, all those different nations began to hear their language. They began to hear these disciples praising God, uh, giving God the glory, declaring the word of the Lord. And they were doing it with so much boldness, with so much power. And it really shook the city because nothing like that had ever happened before. And they could see the evident grace of God and the power of God and the glory of God. And then, of course, you always have the critics who are saying, well, maybe they are drunk. What is this? But it was very clear that something different had happened. Something very powerful had happened. And on that same day, do you all remember Peter? Peter who was short-tempered. Peter who cut off somebody's ear. Peter who denied Jesus, my God, the God we serve is so merciful. That same Peter, God used him so mightily. He preached under a mighty anointing that 3,000 souls came to the Lord that day. Beloved, it was not a bless me gospel. It wasn't the prophets of, I see you getting married in two months. I see you driving a Jaguar. No, it wasn't that type of message. It was actually a very tough message. Repent and be baptized. Repent, you brood of vipers. But the Bible says the people received the word of God gladly and they repented and became born again. And that's how the early church was born. Oh my God, I feel the anointing. I feel the presence of God speaking about this. So when you hear early church people of God, the early church was born on the day of Pentecost. It was born in power. It was born in victory. It was born full of the glory of God. And what made 
made the early church strong and I love the early church. It's amazing we're speaking about this because I'm always preaching that if we could have the standard of the early church in the body of Christ worldwide, I don't know where we would be. What made this church strong? There was no Facebook. They didn't have this media technology. They didn't have the latest equipment. They didn't have the swag and the vibe that we see nowadays, but they had the powerful spirit of God. They had an anointing and the people were so hungry. The Bible says daily they gathered to receive the word. The Bible says they stayed in the apostles' doctrine. They were hungry for God. And I love the early church, Lisa. It was a very Jesus-centered church. The Bible says, if I be lifted up, meaning the Lord Jesus, I would draw all men unto me. When I look at the church today, it is so broken. And we're talking about the church worldwide. Too much flesh, too much me, me, I, I, oh my goodness. It is about Jesus. Even we, the servants of God, we are just vessels. But the early church was strong because it was very Jesus-centered. It was all about lifting the name of the Lord. It was a powerful church because the Spirit of God was moving so mightily. My goodness, the people had the fear of God. And fear not in an oppression where there was that respect Respect for the presence of God, respect for the servants of God, respect for the word of God. Do you know, Lisa, when there's no respect, there's pandemonium. Even in our own homes, if our children don't respect us as parents, when we give them instructions, it becomes a crazy family because then there's no order. There's no organization. Everybody is doing what they want. But we grew up at a time, my God, when your mother just looks at you, you even know you obey. When your father says before he finishes the sentence. And there was so much order in homes. Same the way we grew up, the church we knew, my goodness. If pastor says something, there's no questioning. But look at the church today, Lisa. Everything, there's so much doubt. There's so much suspicion. So much criticism of pastors. How can the spirit of God move like that? But when you look at the early church, they had so much regard. You see, you can never benefit from an anointing you are familiar with. You can never receive from an anointing you disrespect. When we disrespect leaders, oh, he should have said this. Why did pastor also say this? But did you see first lady? Why is she dressed like that? You know, people don't realize all those things quench the move of the Holy Spirit. All that you know, little talking, gossiping, it really grieves the spirit of God. But when I look at the early church in Acts chapter two, my God, what a hunger for God. The Bible says they gladly received the word of God. Uh, and the whole council, when they're being told about repentance, they received. When they're being told Jesus is coming again, they received. But look at the church today. When you give a hard message, people are mad. They're looking at you. Why is pastor criticizing us? Doesn't he know we have problems? But you talk about prosperity, financial breakthrough, and all those things are good, but it is the whole council. So I love the early church. They wanted to grow. They wanted to know more. They wanted to, they wanted to change. Uh, believers today want to party during the week and come to church on Sunday. You cannot serve two masters, people of God. You, you can't have one leg in the club, one leg in the church. One leg in, in drinking, one leg. No, no, we've got to be sold out. I see a people who are sold out and ashamed of the gospel. Whatever it took, they were ready for it. The word of God says they went from house to house. They were a very hospitable church. People opened their homes. My goodness, but today, why do we see people getting burnt out? Because it's few people doing everything. They are praying. They're the ones in media. They're the ones opening their homes. It's not supposed to be like that. 
every believer, you must be serving. Every believer, you must get plugged in. You People should not be getting burnt out, but because they are doing too much. But the Bible says they went from house to house. So hospitality as believers, we should be hospitable. We should be welcoming. Yonggi Cho in Korea, his church grew because of the house-to-house fellowships. The whole week they do house-to-house, praying, fasting, fellowshipping, worshipping. Then on Sunday, they gather together, all people of God, and they loved prayer, the early church. So, you know, the early church was born in power and they kept that power because of the spirit of prayer. The church today, too much entertainment, too much where we've become so worldly and so carnal. We've got to get back to the basics of loving the word of God, of loving prayer and loving fellowship. Believers, you know, this COVID, I tell you, it was from the pit of hell because people got so comfortable with staying at home and thank God for technology. I love technology and I minister every day on Facebook preaching to people. Thank God for technology, but it cannot compare to the fellowship. There's something about being in the atmosphere. You know, you hear a testimony you hear a worship, you hear the preaching of the word, you, you, you see somebody serving, there's something, the Bible even says, neglect not, forsake not the assembly of the saints. The early church was strong because of that fellowship. Lisa, I remember growing up, by the way, I'm from Zambia, but I grew up in Kenya. And I remember as young people, Lisa, man, we were on fire for God. And we were very accountable to each other and to our pastor. If we saw anybody becoming like a little dry, no, 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 we could not let you. We will just pray for you. We will ask you what is wrong. What is your, I mean, not, not to control or to be inquisitive, but out of that concern to say, no, 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 you, you cannot backslide. But today, some people even get offended when you check on them too much. When you ask them, why didn't you come to church? You know, we see like your prayer life is dwindling. People get offended. We never got offended. Our pastor was so strict, Lisa, Oh my goodness, we never got offended. And he was a man of fasting. You finish seven days, you think, okay, lay time for pancakes. Three days later, you're doing only 10 days. Two days later, you're only 21. Lisa, we never questioned, we never criticized, we just obeyed. And I'm telling you, those young people, here we are today, we are strong ministers of the gospel, but it is that foundation that was laid. And that's what I see in the early church. They had such a hunger, a desire for the word of God, for prayer and for fellowship. Let me stop there, Lisa, so you can comment and continue to ask. Well, thank you so very much. Thank you very much. You really made some important points there. You made some important Amen. points. I really, personally, I love to read about what happened in the early church. I love to read about that because I see the demonstration of power. I, I've seen mm. the demonstration of power. You know, some, some of the important things that you mentioned with that, that early church was born from the power of the Holy Spirit. The church Amen. was birthed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that is in Acts Amen. chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we see that they were in one accord. We see that yes. they came together. And we see mm. that they are coming together was in obedience of the promise that uh, Jesus has told, told them. He yes. said, tarry in Jerusalem. Do not go. Do not leave yet. Tarry until you are endued with power. And we see mm. that they are hunger. They are hunger and desperation and yearning mm. For, mm. for this power, yearning for the power that had been promised to them is what made them go to the upper room. So right. I, I think what's lacking today, like you said, you know, is the power, is the hunger. 
hunger. Mm. People are not as hungry as the apostles were. Right. Right. People today can fill their hunger with, with different things. There's so, much, so many mm. things at our disposal. But we mm. see the hunger and we see that that church was birthed in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is very important because you can mm. see you can see the difference between like you, you illustrate, you, are, you alluded to that. Peter before the Holy Spirit and Peter Life. after the Holy Spirit. We see a difference. <laughs> Peter could not speak before. Peter could not right. could not say who he was before. But after, mm. after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we see Peter changed. I've heard mm. some people say mm. Peter was rocktified, if at all there's a word like that. He was no longer a chicken because he chickened out when they asked him <laughs> if he knew who Jesus was. He chickened Jesus out. He was. said, I, right. no, I don't know him. But we see Peter now, Jesus saying, upon this rock. So Peter is no longer a chicken. You know, he's become mm. the rock. Jesus says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. So mm. children of God, you know, the, 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 the word here is that the church was birthed in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Amen. prophetess has alluded to so many beautiful things. Hunger, hunger for the word, fellowship, all those things. She mentioned very important things. Respect for, for, for the leaders. This is mm. something this generation is lacking, prophetess. It, it is such Ish. a shame. It's such mm. a shame mm. that this, mm. the, the, this generation today is lacking respect for leaders. Uh, I, I really mm. don't know what it is, but we need the mercy of God. We need the mercy of God to come out of this, to mm. come out of this. Mm. I'll tell you, prophetess, that it comes up so much, you know, when you are around church members and so forth, that, you know, those conversations come up that mm. I, I feel they are very uncomfortable conversations. And children of God, if it's you and somebody's coming up with a conversation that disrespect another leader, run away from it. Sure. Run away or from correct it. Them. Run, or, or correct them. Correct them, yes. Rebuke correct them. them. Mm. Prophetess, mm. God has been speaking to me particularly on this issue of this generation has to respect leaders. You know, I was mm. reading the, 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 the book of Exodus and I saw uh, how um, Aaron and Miriam disrespected Moses, you know, mm -hmm. in talking about what he had done after he had taken mm -hmm. up the, you know, the Cushite woman, how the two disre disrespected him and God, how God defended his servant when he spit right. on Miriam and Miriam ended up with leprosy. So children of mm. God, let's come out of it. Let's stay away from it. You know, we, you may think you know too much, but respect the man and woman of God that God has put as a cover over your life worldwide. Let's just respect the women, uh, uh, men and women of God that God has, uh, uh, has chosen to lead us in this generation. Let's respect and pray for them. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. So moving forward, um, prophetess, I want us to talk about um, why is it important for a Christian to influence their world for the kingdom? Why is it important? And I want to say that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, so we had a um, women's conference here at Agape Word Center Church. And there was yeah. something one of our speakers mentioned that really caught my attention and just gave me an awakening. And she said, we are not saved just for eternity. Because if that was the case, I would be saved today and die tomorrow. We are not converted right. so we can inherit eternity. We are not converted so we can enjoy heaven. You know, that is one of the benefits. You know, my coming to Christ is not because, it's not because I, I should go to heaven. Because if that was the case, I would come to Christ today, I'll be saved today and die tomorrow. But why are mm. we still alive? Why are we living? What is, what is our purpose here on earth? After you become born again, after you come to Christ, then what? And that's my next question. Why is it important for a Christian to influence the world for the kingdom? Why is it important? Why should I do it? I'm saved. Should I just be comfortable and come to church? I'm saved. What else? Why should I be concerned about influencing my world? 
it, it's very important, uh, Lisa, and that's an excellent question. You see, because we are carriers of good news. The Bible says we are the salt of the world, salt of the earth, and the light of the world. How can you have good news and keep it to yourself? You know, it's like when you when you come across a good restaurant or a nice boutique, you want to share with your friends, oh my God, that shop has beautiful dresses you need to go or you need to taste that Indian food. Naturally, when there's good news or when you're in love, you've gotten engaged, it's good news. When you've had a baby, you know, somebody just texted me, I don't even know, 30 pictures of their newborn baby because it's good news. So when Jesus comes into our heart, oh my goodness, it is good news. How can you keep it to yourself? I was telling uh, Minister Stephanie last week, how I used to be so shy, uh, Minister Lisa. I know it's hard to believe, but Jesus transformed my life. The power of the Holy Spirit came upon me and made me a preacher. And so even my school friends, when they see me, they're like, we can't believe you. What happened to you? And that's my opportunity to tell them about Jesus. And they're like, but you look even better. You look young. I say, you see what Jesus can do? It's, And I'm still very happy because I used to joke a lot <laughs> with my friends. It's even more now. They're like, wow, you know, we didn't know Christianity is this exciting. I said, I'm a living testimony because Jesus gives me joy. I don't need to drink. I don't need to smoke. I don't need to go to the club. The Lord Jesus makes me happy. So all of us must be so winners. We must share the good news, whether you're a student, whether you're a housewife, whether you're an administrator, a doctor, lawyer, engineer, you're in media, Whoever you are, when you are born again, you cannot keep the good news to yourself. Tell somebody. In fact, the Bible says we are living epistles, read of all men. Just the way we carry ourselves, people must say there's something different about you. You know, wherever you go, you are a carrier of the presence of God, a carrier of the word of God. And that's what I loved about the early church. In fact, when they saw uh, Peter and John somewhere, some of the disciples, they said, those people have been with the Lord. Those people, you see? So there's something about us. People may not be able to put their finger on it, but they must say you are different. There's just a peace about you. you you're just always happy. You're always smiling. That is a tool for evangelism. So every believer, I got saved when I was a teenager. And even as a teenager, I used to share about Jesus because the change in me was very visible. So we, as you said, Lisa, we are not saved just to sit in church and we're looking forward to go to heaven. No, the world needs us. The Bible says the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. So if you work in a hospital, be a witness for the Lord. You work in Walmart, be a witness for the Lord. My two sons, the second and third, they're basketball athletes. They play college basketball. They witness for the Lord there because all the time, whenever they have a tournament, their coach will call them, come on, Trey, Prince, pray for us. They even tease them. They call them bishop, evangelist, pray for us that we may win. You see, I may not be able to go there and preach to those kids, but my sons, because their peers identify and say, wow, you can play basketball and still love the Lord. You can be cool and still love the Lord. So each of us are mandated to make an impact and to influence our generation and our circle, wherever he has put us, shine for the Lord, speak for the Lord, Testify for the Lord. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen, amen. Uh, well, prophetess, I like the fact that you said you don't need a title because I, I, I think that um, we think that sharing the gospel should be for evangelists or you should be a pastor or you should be a pastor's wife or you should 
have some kind of important role in the church for you to share the gospel. I think a lot of times that limits a lot of people from doing that. And, um, but I, I, I see a very good example in the word of God. You know, mm. I see John the Baptist. I don't know if he mm -hmm. had any title. He was not a disciple of Christ. He was not a disciple of Christ, but he preached. He was a and forerunner. I, exactly. And I think mm. if we talk about impact, John the Baptist is one of those that had such great impact. And, and wow. he, he, he had such great impact because the Bible says he preached in the wilderness. And mm. the Bible says Imagine. people went to him wherever he preached. Imagine. The Imagine. multitude went to him. You know, he, he preached, he, maybe wilderness could be um, in those days, maybe, um, maybe uh, what is this, uh, where they bury people? Uh, a graveyard, a graveyard. graveyard. You know, mm. he preached at the graveyard. That's where he was preaching. Mm. The Bible says he ate um, locust. So that means mm. he was in the wilderness for a long time. That's what he was eating. That's how he was clothed. Wow. But this, mm. this mm. man, mm had the greatest impact because people left their cities and went to mm -hmm. him. So child of God, Amazing. you don't need a title like prophetess has said. Mm. None of us, that mandate is for everyone. You don't need a yes. title, you know. You, you can be young, like the example she's given her children. It doesn't matter the age. Anyone mm -hmm. can preach the gospel. So we are not here to just uh, warm the chairs in the church. Let's go mm -hmm. out and preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, prophetess, Amen. the couple of weeks ago, I met one, one lady at the women's conference that we had at Agape. And she shared mm. with me, I was sitting down with her uh, eating. You know, we, we, we had food after service and we sat together and ate. And she told me that she's a converted Muslim. And she wow. said, yes, yeah, she said, I'm a converted Muslim. And before I came to Christ, I had a specific assignment to convert Christians to the religion of Muslim. Wow. She said she converted mm. a lot of, uh, of Christians to the religion, not non-believers, but people who what? were Christians, she converted them. That's how radical she was. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how radical we are. So children of God, let's mm. be radical. Let's be mm. radical for Christ. Let, it, let us be all sold out like the, the, the early church, just like prophet has said. You know, you can't imagine what is going out there if Muslims can be that radical. What about us? We preach the true gospel of Christ. We imagine, preach the truth. Imagine. What about us? What about us? Mm. You know, one thing prophetess that I've come across, people say that I don't know what to say. Maybe you can give us an example. Like if I meet an unbeliever, how can I start my conversation? How can I start my conversation? in order to bring that person to Christ. Maybe we can give an you example know, of how to do that. Yes, the beautiful, thank you. You know, uh, I've found that when we are warm and friendly and caring, people will open up. You know, for example, say you walk into Walmart and uh, maybe you even help a, a, a little old lady. You know how you see them sometimes in those to my chairs. It may be something for, you know, you, so when you just that act of kindness, they'll be. She will start off saying, "Oh, thank you so much." You know, people know everyone else passed, but you you stopped right there. You take, "Oh, I stopped because I love Jesus, and Jesus loves you." You see, so it, it has to be very, uh, very natural. Most people, at least, when you show some kindness, some warmth, sometimes you may walk in a place you're singing like I, I I'm generally. I'm a happy person. People are always like, don't you have any problems? <laughs> I'm like, I have plenty, but I know a problem solver. His name is Jesus. And from there, yes, you know, so I found it should be natural. Don't just accost somebody. Do you know you're going to go to hell? No, that, that is such a total turn off. But when it's natural, when it flows and start maybe you 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 know taking a walk in your neighborhood and your neighbor sees you all the time and you know you start to talk and and from there there, there are just so many ways but for me I found it very effective when it flows naturally 
it flows naturally. Amen. 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 So now moving Amen. on, <clears throat> we talked about the early church and mm -hmm. what made them so different and how they were able to make an impact. So the opposite could be what is hindering us from making impact. But I want to talk about how can we overcome all these things? What, what should a, a today's Christian do to overcome all the obstacles that we talked about earlier? Not being hungry for the word. How do I just become mm. hungry for, for the word? I have trouble respecting our leaders. How do I do that? I feel I'm not sold out for Christ. How can I get to a place of being sold out for Christ? How, how do I just wake up and start, uh, 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 and start preaching the word? You know, what mm. can I do? My prayer life is not effective. My prayer life is hardly active. What, mm. How can I mm. overcome these things? Now that I've heard the word today, what do I do? What should be my first step? after this conversation, what can I do to overcome Beautiful. all these challenges that have been hindering me from making impact? Beautiful, beautiful. Those are excellent questions and thank you viewers for tuning in. You know, first of all, be regular at church. Look at how people miss church. Sometimes it, and the excuses are very flimsy. Oh, we had guests, you know, they left at midnight, so I, I won't make it to church but we'll make it to work, you, you know? So we make a lot of flimsy excuses. Let's stop excuses. Don't miss the house of God because just that atmosphere is even what should create hunger in you. When you're in church, please concentrate. The amount of people who are on their phones during pastor's message, they're on Facebook, they're responding to WhatsApp, please put away your phone and hear the word because the word will stir faith in you. And even when you go home, go meditate over that scripture that pastor has, has taught or maybe the, the deaconess or the deacon, whoever. You know, have a time for the word every day before you leave your home. You can even read a few uh, scriptures in the gospel. I always encourage people, the Psalms, the Proverbs. We've become so busy. We want so much from God. We want heavens to open. We want breakthroughs, but we have to invest spiritually. So you've got to take time for the word of God, whether it's 30 minutes, you know, and I'm saying 30 minutes because I don't want to say take two hours. You'll be like, oh, prophetess, I work two jobs. So that's why I'm saying start with 30 minutes. But fellowship is key. Whatever you do, don't miss the house of God. Number two, find time for the word. Number three, prayer is everything. Many people tell me, Lisa, when I start to pray, I get sleepy. I get bored. I start thinking of so many things. What I found very effective, I love to walk. So in my walks, that's the time I pray. I admire the beautiful nature. I start thanking God for the beautiful flowers. And from there, it, it just begins to flow. Remember that prayer is talking to God. How can you be bored? You know, pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your future, pray for the rest of 2024. You will find that time has gone, but prayer will bring that spiritual revival. Prayer will bring that renewal. Our associations matter. If you associate with, for example, Lisa, I'm sure you've seen now on Facebook, the attack against men and women of God, it is so heartbreaking. And I'm like, now, how are we going to win souls? And we have a group, no tithing is wrong. This is wrong. Have you noticed, Lisa, you will never see Muslims bringing down their religion on, on social media. You will never see them attacking their imams. They have so much respect. So believers, please, let's stop that. Is the church perfect? No. 
Is the body of Christ perfect? No. But what we have really, really, really uh, done a very disservice to ourselves, this bringing up stuff that's happening. So the non-believers are like, eh, eh, a body of Christ? Mm -mm. We, we would rather stick to our demons. You guys have too much mess. So let's not be part of those who are pulling the things of God down. People of God, association is everything. If your associations are people who party, people who are drinking, now I'm not saying cut off uh, your relatives. I have school friends who are not born again. They know that I love them, but I don't hang out with them all the time because their lifestyle will affect me. You got to hang out with people who are on fire who are excited about God, they're saying, my God, read this scripture because iron sharpens iron. Uh, the Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. I've seen very strong people today. Oh my goodness. You can't even believe it's the same because of company. So your inner circle, they should push you in the things of God. They should help you to love the Lord. Glory be to God. When you look at the early church, every day they were in the house of God. Don't miss the Bible study. Don't miss the overnight. Parents, encourage your young people to attend the youth service. Very, very important. And serve. Don't just come to church like a policeman. Oh, the usher didn't greet me. I didn't like the worship. I don't like pastor's wife shoes. Honey, stop being a policeman. Come with a good heart. Come and worship and come and serve. You know, when you are busy serving, there's a way you grow. There's a way, you know, as you are, you realize you are helping to move the church forward. So instead of just criticizing and judging, get busy serving. Do you know that by your serving, you're inspiring others? So when somebody serves with joy, it's very contagious, like your incredible team, Minister Lisa, Minister Stephanie, Josh, you are all so gracious. It's so beautiful to see young people doing such a great work for the Lord. So be an inspiration to somebody through your serving. Amen and amen and amen. What a time in the presence of God. Child of God, you heard it for yourself tonight. My question is, if you are not burning for Christ, who are you burning for? If you are not living for Christ, who are you living for? If you are not uh, chasing after your destiny, what are you chasing after? What are you living for? I believe satisfaction and fulfillment of life will come when you are in pursuit of what God has created you to be. What, has, what God has created you to be, if you're in pursuit of that, if you are living the life of purpose that God has designed for you, that's where fulfillment and satisfaction of life will come from. So you have it today. There is no any other way of getting from where you are to where God has created or where God has designed you to be without prayer, without the word of God. You cannot get there. There must be prayer. There must be meditation of the word. There must be fellowship. Come away from wrong associations. You know, this just provoked my spirit when prophet has said Muslims do not attack their leaders. So why are we attacking our leaders, Christians? We are on Facebook laughing at our, lead, our leaders. When somebody makes a silly joke, we comment on them. Let's come out of there, children of God. Let's be on fire for Christ. Let's, let's burn for him. Let's have a deeper hunger for him. Let's influence our world. Let's influence the people around us. Let's influence our nation. Hallelujah. Amen. We had a wonderful time, Prophetess uh, uh, Mwaka. I am so grateful to have had this time with you. I am looking forward to many more times as we are talking. So many topics are going in my head, you know, so I do want to have another time with you. I hope you'll be available for that. Absolutely. I've had such a marvelous time. I don't know where the time went. I felt the presence of God throughout this broadcast and 
We pray that the viewers, well, their faith was stirred and we hope we provoked a hunger in you Amen. to pursue God and to love God and not to miss the assembling of the saints. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, Prophetess Mwaka, um, if I can just have you pray for our viewers tonight and just speak sure. into their lives, then we can close after that. <clears throat> amen, amen. Thank you again, Lisa, for such a marvelous, amazing moment in the presence of God. And thank you, Pastor Chongo and Pastor Angela, for this wonderful beautiful opportunity to minister to God's people. Viewers, I want you to know the world is getting worse. Uh, the enemy, the kingdom of darkness is doing all kinds of things. We cannot afford to be lukewarm. We cannot afford to be complacent. We cannot afford to make excuses. We are either hot or cold. We are either on fire or we are not. Jeremiah said, it is like a fire shut up in my bones. I'm praying for you who maybe have gotten so caught up with work and responsibilities and spiritually you are down. I pray for a spiritual revival in the name of Jesus. I pray for a spiritual renewal in the name of Jesus. I pray you come back to your first love. I pray the spirit of God will draw you back. May the love for prayer, the love for the word, the love for the house of God come back in the name of Jesus. May the Lord meet you in Jesus' mighty name, and may you make an impact. May you be a person of influence in the name of Jesus, no matter your age. You may be a young person who's listening to me. God used young people. David was young. Esther was young. They were mightily used of the living God. I pray a mighty revival will spark from this. I pray that something we said has ministered to you. Maybe you are among those who've been critical of clergy, critical of church. This is not to condemn you, but to say, come out of that. We are on the same side. The body of Christ, we need to unite more than ever before and push the kingdom of our father. Maybe you're in a backslidden state. You used to love the Lord, but you've grown cold. You, because of association, you're doing all kinds of things. The Lord does not condemn you, but he's calling you to come back. He wants you to rededicate your life back to him in the name of Jesus. I pray for every single viewer. May the God whom we serve transform your life. Just like Peter's life was transformed and the disciples became powerful apostles because of the power of the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit fall mightily upon you and transform you and deliver you and change you. Be set free from every addiction, from the lust of the flesh, from the things that pull you back into the things of the world. And I lose the fire of God, the fire for worship, the fire to pray, the fire to love his word. My God, I pray that you young people, you will be an example to others. You young people, you will take a stand. You will be like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refused to bow. May you be like Joseph, who refused to compromise. I pray for you men and women who are watching that today will be a turning point. Today you will say no more excuses, no more missing the house of God. I want to be serious with my walk with God. I want to be committed and dedicated in the name of Jesus. People of God, we are called to make an impact. We are called to be influential. We are living epistles, read of all men. You are ambassadors of Jesus. You are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. May you begin to shine at your places of work with the glory of God. May you shine in school wherever God has placed you. May you shine for the cause of Christ. 
in Jesus mighty mighty name amen and amen, amen and amen and amen thank you very much uh, prophetess uh, mwaka looking forward to seeing you again next time thank you agape family for watching and thank you to all our viewers worldwide until next time it's bye bye